Well, it seems like folks in Davos are waking up to the reality of our very, very fake markets that we have going on here, and uh, the, the fact that all of this uh, so-called prosperity that we're enjoying right now, um, i.e. rising equity prices and rising bond prices, uh, is something that is uh, going to be fairly short-lived. Now, specifically, I'm referring to the, uh, the comments of uh, Scott Minard, or Minard, uh, I, I can never remember how to pronounce his name, uh, one of the problems, I guess, of not watching, uh, you know, the the fake financial news, you know, networks like CNBC, is that I never actually hear these people's names, uh, you know, spoken out loud. I, I only ever read them uh, online in the uh, in the when I'm reading the news. But anyway, Scott here uh, is, uh, you know, one of the top guys. I believe he's chief investment officer at uh, Guggenheim, uh, which is a uh, you know major uh, investment firm. And so, of course, you know, he's at Davos with all the other, you know, very rich people of the world, uh, the folks who, uh, who uh, control uh, most of the money on the planet. And uh, he's decried uh, the market right now as a Ponzi scheme, uh, something that is uh, eventually uh, going to lead to uh, a whole lot of trouble and a whole lot of mess. Now, I don't believe he, you know, made a speech at Davos or anything stating this. I'm not even sure if he, if he's speaking at Davos. He was probably just an attendee, uh, but uh, he wrote a letter from Davos uh, to his uh, his investors, decrying what the Fed has been doing and essentially saying that, uh, you know, the Fed has been, uh, you know, keeping credit very cheap uh, and uh, blowing a big fat bubble. Uh, specifically, he, he brought up uh, the zombie corporations, which is something I haven't heard people talk about a whole lot in a while, uh, but I think it's something that we're going to hear an awful lot about during the next crash. And the idea of a zombie corporation is essentially this is a company that cannot pay its debt, that does not have enough income coming in uh, to uh, remain solvent, but is able to stay afloat by continually refinancing its debt at ever uh, lower interest rates. And so these um, uh, these corporations are able to pay the interest on their debt, but they are not able to pay down any of the principles. So that means that you know as soon as uh, interest rates rise substantially and all of a sudden they can't make the interest payment anymore, well, they're going to have to default. And, and so that's why he calls this a Ponzi scheme. None of these bonds that they're issuing can be paid back. These companies pay for their old bonds by issuing new bonds. And so the only way you as a bond holder ever gets your money back is if uh, you know some, some other sap is dumb enough to give this company their money, which is quite literally uh, the definition of a Ponzi scheme, although I guess it's just not um, – it's not considered bad or illegal uh, when you're being honest about it and when it's all out in the open. You know? um, and of course it's not illegal when Social Security does it because Social Security works the same way. Um, the, the way that current Social Security payments are paid are by people who are working now paying the Social Security tax and, and funding uh, the, uh, the Social Security payments uh, to the elderly people who are currently receiving benefits. And so much in the same way that, uh, you know, as uh, the uh, population in America gets older and we have demographic shifts to where there's too many old people and too few, few young people, the Social Security system will collapse. Uh, so too, uh, when uh, anything, you know, changes and or when investors wake up to the reality of the Ponzi scheme in the bond market, will all of these corporations uh, who have no real ability to pay back any of their debts uh, start going bust? Now, some of you might be saying, what's the big deal? You know, hey, I don't own any triple B rated uh, corporate bonds. Uh, I don't care uh, if these guys start going bust. You know, I don't own any of their debt. Uh, well, the problem is, is that once this starts happening, there inevitably uh, will be contagion. Uh, just in the same way that the housing market collapse uh, did not, you know, uh, stay confined to the housing market, it spread into other markets. Uh, it brought down a whole lot um, uh, of other uh, industries with it. So too uh, will the corporate bond collapse. And it's not even necessarily the case that you know corporate bonds, uh, you know, will come down on their own. Uh, it might be the case that uh, the corporate bond crisis is triggered uh, by a, a uh, some exogenous event like you know another uh, industry going or another you know sector of the financial you know another part of the financial sector going bust. Uh, you know it could be uh, that we uh, that we see a, a pop in the stock market bubble uh, before you see a corporate bond bubble bust. 
But nevertheless, once all this triple B rated stuff uh, starts getting downgraded, uh, you're obviously going to see a cascading effect to where everything that's above that triple B rating is going to get downgraded too. Because if the triple B stuff all ends up being junk, well then, uh, what's the new triple B? Well, the new triple B is the you know is the, um, the the next stuff. And so the value of all those corporate bonds are going to start going down, and interest rates are probably going to rise. And not because the Fed is is raising interest rates. No, it's going to the, the interest rates will rise on their own because of the risk premium. And so therefore, as uh, as uh, the uh, you know bonds start to sell off uh, and the uh, and the rates go up, well then all these other country, companies are going to become much more stressed. Even companies that weren't necessarily uh, in bad financial shape to begin with are suddenly in bad financial shape because they have a, a, a much bigger debt burden than they did before. Now, to me, the, no, the most interesting thing about hearing this from a Davos attendee is that no one, uh, after this next crash, will be able to claim that nobody saw this coming. Because, of course, uh, you know, there, after 2008, that's what all of the, uh, the wizards of smart said. All of the respectable people said, oh, well, it doesn't matter uh, that uh, there was this big crash because nobody saw that coming. You know, so we should be held accountable for that. Uh, you know, and who, who could have predicted this, even though lots of people predicted it? Of course, you know, Peter Schiff likes to uh, bring up the most, I think, out of anyone who, who did predict it, that, hey, I predicted it. You know, I could see it coming. So you guys, you know, you don't have much excuse. Uh, you know, but of course, their excuse is, well, Peter Schiff is a crazy person. So, you know, why, why should we believe him? But this time around, it's not just crazy people like Peter Schiff that respectable folks don't like. You have, uh, you know, the uh, the CIO of Guggenheim. You have uh, their, uh, I, I believe, also the head of their um, uh, their fixed income division uh, or department, whatever they call it. Um, basically, the person in charge of bonds and other kinds of securities like that. Um, I believe her name was Anne something. Uh, she also uh, was. Speaking to their investors, uh, I believe it was some kind of an email blast, and she said something similar about how, uh, you know, the, the the Fed has created all these zombie corporations, and I think she uh, pointed out that about 15% uh, of companies are kind of already, you know, 15% of the economy is already in a recession, and that essentially, you know, once that bubble is pricked, uh, you're going to see uh, lots of other, um, you, you know, many more companies brought down with them. And that the longer this goes on, and the the longer that these uh, these zombie companies are able to accumulate more and more debt, that the worse uh, you know the, this inevitable crash is going to be. And again, these are this is coming from mainstream people. These are mainstream Wall Street folks. Okay, the the central bankers have no excuse this time uh, for doing what they're doing. Everyone sees, even if well, I shouldn't say everyone, but plenty of people see what's going on right now. And yet the Fed and all the other central banks aren't uh, – they have not even a modicum of concern. You know, you've got Powell up there, and he sounds just like old Ben uh, subprime is contained Bernanke uh, who went on lying what, past the point to where he absolutely knew what was going on uh, in 2007 and 2008, talking about how, oh, the housing market is not going to you know, um, affect uh, the, uh, the broader economy. And before the housing bubble burst, he was saying, oh, oh, you should go out and buy a house. You know, the, the best time to buy a house is today, and housing prices are, are still really good, and they're going to go so much higher. And I mean, it, it, it's disgusting how, uh, how the, uh, so many powerful people try and mislead ordinary Americans just to get them to spend more money uh, that they don't have uh, to fuel some short-term boost in, in GDP. You know, Sven Henrik had an interesting piece arguing that uh, um, the pressure is building. Uh, against the uh, against the central bankers and against you know really the financial class uh, around the world, and that uh, eventually people are you know go out and get uh, torches and pitchforks and come for these people, because all of their economic machinations are uh, inevitably going to have a terrible effect on ordinary people. And so if ordinary people ever really do figure that out to any great extent, uh, there's going to be a lot of popular rage. I think a lot of what helps uh, the financial class. Um, avoid the backlash is that these things are just so opaque that it's, it's really hard for an ordinary person who's not well read on these topics and who's not involved in financial markets uh, to really understand what's going on. But it really is as simple as the Fed distorting the entire economy and creating uh, and setting up the setting the stage uh, for a terrible recession uh, just uh, so that they may enrich uh, a few of the richest people in the world. Uh, 
for a few years in the short term. You know, it's pure unadulterated greed. They're creating terrible economic conditions for the average American and, you know, average people around the world because it's not just the Fed. It's all the central banks working in concert since 2008 uh, to, uh, you know, promote this idea of synchronized global growth, which is itself an absolute fiction. And the only people who benefit from this, even in the short term, uh, are the richest folks in the world. And the people who will uh, lose out uh, when there's a terrible economic disruption, the folks who you know already live paycheck to paycheck during the boom, uh, they um, are, are getting totally hosed by the central banks. And so that about does it for my update from Davos. Not that I'm personally in Davos, but I, I think it's interesting to see that these folks are aware of what's going on. So if you gained anything of value out of this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and sharing this video. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe because I do upload every day and I'd hate to have you miss one. So I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.